Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So already in our previous video we started discussion on fundamental concepts of networking in AWS cloud computing domain, right? And today in this particular video I am going to discuss another very very important topic related to networking and that is basically network address translation or in short it is called NAT, okay? So what is that? Let us try to understand step by step, okay? So if you recall our previous video discussion, we created this kind of architecture where we are having our AWS cloud and inside that basically we created a virtual private cloud, okay? And in that virtual private cloud, we created two subnets. One subnet, suppose subnet A and another one is B, okay? This subnet A is public subnet because maybe we want to host one public facing web server in an EC2 instance which will be launched in this public subnet. That's why it need internet connection. So that's why it is kept public. And as you can see here also, here route table is there. And with this particular route table, internet gateway is attached, which will help this particular EC2 whatever is launched in this public subnet to connect with the internet, right? And apart from that, we also created an another EC2 instance in this private subnet B, okay? Maybe app server or database server, we will be keeping here in this particular EC2 instance, okay? And database data should be kept in a very secured manner, right? That's why we have created this particular EC2 in private subnet so that it will not have direct connection with internet, okay? So then question might come, how we can enter in this EC2 instance because SSH also will not work from internet. So for that, what we did basically, we connected with internet SSH to this particular EC2 instance. And because locally, this particular EC2 and this EC2 are coming under same VPC. So they have local communication possible, right? So from this particular EC2, which is launched in public subnet, from there, we tried to do SSH in this particular private subnet EC2. That's what, what we did, but we have tried to ping Google from this particular private subnet EC2 and we have seen all the packets basically lost. That means from this particular private subnet EC2, we cannot connect with the internet, okay? That's the clear picture, whatever we have covered in our previous video. If you want to know the detailed explanation, then please go through the link given in the description box because I cannot explain the same thing in another video again, right? Just uh, let's optimize the time in a better way. So that is fine with respect to security point that this particular EC2 which is launched in private subnet where database or app servers are present that they don't have direct connection with the internet, right? That is fine. But sometime in some specific context, we might need to download some particular files for our databases or might be we need to access one particular external server okay which is possible only via internet connection okay but still what we want we want that for this particular ec2 privacy will be maintained okay so how we can do that one possible way is suppose you will be having some mechanism where if you need to connect with internet, then first you will request to this particular machine and this particular machine will connect with internet and get the information and send back to you, okay? So from the internet side, if you see, it will appear that this machine is making all the requests and all the stuff it is doing in the back end, right? But that way, basically this particular machine is exposed to internet. But anyway, our this particular EC2 where database is there, that will be secure, right? So if there is some mechanism, we can use that particular one, okay? And that's where the concept of NAT, network address translation comes, okay? That is to access the internet, one public IP address is needed. So if you recall, for this particular EC2, what we launched in public subnet while configuring the EC2, you have allowed to auto assign one public IP, right? Why we assign public IP? So that it can connect with internet, okay, right? So internet gateway is required for internet connection as well as one public IP is also needed, right? For this EC2 to connect with internet, right? That's what is written here. To access internet, one public IP address is needed, but we can use a private address also in our private network in some workaround manner to access internet, okay? And the idea of NAT or network address translation is to allow multiple devices which are basically in private network to access the internet 
through a single public address. Okay, that's what I have shown here, right? This there can be multiple EC2 instance which all are hosted in private subnet. They don't have any public IP address. Okay, so they cannot connect to internet directly. But network address translation is a mechanism using which we will be having a public IP address here. And that one we can basically use to connect to internet or whenever required from these EC2 private instances. Okay, that's what is written here. The idea of NAT is to allow multiple devices to access the internet through a single public access. So as if it will appear that this particular IP is making all the requests and this is the backend. Okay, and that way this alone will be exposed to internet, not this particular private system. So that is kind of secured, right? And to achieve this, the translation of private IP address to public IP address is required. So when you are making a request, this is your private IP address subnet. From there you are requesting this here, public IP is there. So from this private to public, you are making a request and that public is connecting to internet. And then here the response will come. Then again from public to private IP address conversion will happen and it will send the response to EC2, right? This particular conversion of addresses, network addresses or translation of network addresses is nothing but done by NAT. To achieve this, this translation of private IP address to public IP address is required which is done by NAT. That's what the name network address translation is there, right? I hope you are getting the feeling. So network address translation or in small we can say NAT is a process in which one or more local IP address which are basically in private, you can say private IP address in private subnet, okay, is translated to one or more global public IP address or vice versa in order to provide internet access to the local host. Okay, right. So let's see how we can implement that in our AWS cloud with respect to networking point of view. Okay, so this was our earlier architecture where we are having one EC2 instance in this public subnet, we are having another EC2 instance in the private subnet. Okay. So from this particular public subnet EC2, we can ping this particular private subnet EC2 as well as we can connect to internet, right? But uh, if we enter in this particular EC2 from this public subnet EC2, then if we try to ping internet, it will not work basically because the IGW is not there in this particular EC2, right? So let's implement till this place and then I will show you the NAT implementation. So for this, I have taken the same setup what we did in our earlier video. So if I go to VPC, I created this particular VPC. If you see, that is virtual private cloud. This is the one what we created. And for this, we created two subnet. One is private subnet B and another one is public subnet A. And for them, we created the routing tables also and we assigned them. So public route is for the public uh, subnet EC2 and private route is for private subnet EC2, right? So what we will do, keeping all this configuration, whatever we did in our earlier video as it is, we will just try to launch our EC2 instances both for public and private case and make our stuffs ready, okay? So here what I will do, I will launch instance, I will go to Linux machine. And then here I will go to configure instance detail. So here what I will do, I will take our VPC and subnet for this case, let us take the public subnet, what we are going to use our public EC2, okay. And here we want to assign a public IP, right. So auto assign public IP we have enabled. Then we will go to next. And here we are enabling SSH, that's fine. For security purpose, you can only keep SSH enabled only for your IP. Kind of it will act like firewall, so not a problem. And then let's launch this one. Okay, I already have created the key pair in our earlier discussion. I'm going to use the same. Okay, right? So if I go to this particular EC2, it is still in pending state. So what I will do? I will basically come out of full screen mode in our PPT. And I will take my slides where I was. So we are trying to recreate the same setup, whatever we did earlier. Okay. So here, this is our EC2 now in running state. What I will do, I will, I will just check once whether we are able to connect with internet or not. Okay. From this public EC2. 
I will take our PPK file and I will open this one. I will click yes and then here I will put PC2 user. Okay, which is a default user ID for Linux machine. And now we can do ping google.com. Okay, so here ping is working perfectly, right? So now what we will do, we will launch a EC2 in our private subnet. Okay. So here I will choose our virtual private cloud and here private subnet I am enabling. No need to assign any public IP for this case. We will go to next address, then next tax, next configure security group. Here to check whether ping from the public is to private is to working or not, what we can do, we can allow ICMP. Okay. And SSH we might not need to give this complete stuff because only we need connection from our public EC2. So what I will do, I will go to subnets and I will be taking our public subnet, okay. And I will go to route tables. Sorry, I will go to IPv4 CIDR for this particular subnet. I will take that one and I will paste that. Okay, that is only from this public subnet we want to connect with our private subnet EC2, okay. And for ICMP also I am keeping the same. And review and launch. Okay, let's launch this one. I am using the same PEM file and I will launch the instance. So now this is launched in private subnet, so it is not having any public IP as well as we will not be having any internet connection. Okay, so it is in pending state. Let's wait for some time. So it is in running state now, right? Now, what I will do, I will go inside this particular private EC2 and here see public IP V4 address is not there, that's fine. And I will now take this particular private IP address and I will try to ping from my public IP address, public EC2, okay. And here it is working, good. So basically we are able to ping google.com as well as we are able to ping our private subnet EC2, okay. Now what we will do, we will basically use this particular EC2 to enter in the private subnet EC2, okay, and that how we can do, we can do it with SCP, first we have to move the PEM file to our this particular public subnet EC2, and that one we can use to SSH in that private subnet EC2, right, so I will just do that quickly, so here I will be going to my public EC2, and I will be taking the public IP address, and then here I will be going to new site, I will be giving the host name, I will be giving the username and password I will be choosing from the private key whatever we created in our earlier video and let's log in okay and I will basically move the PEM file from Windows to our this particular public subnet EC2 okay so here we go and it is done now if I do here ls here you will see this particular PEM file is available okay now I can go back to instance and then here this is our private EC2 right. So I will just select that and I will click on connect okay. I will just copy this particular code whatever is there. And then what I will do, I will basically execute this particular code. So what we are doing we are entering in the private subnet EC2 from our public subnet EC2 okay. And I can give yes and that's done. Now we have entered in the private subnet EC2. Okay. Now if I try to do ping google.com here, it will not work. Okay. All the packets will be lost. See, four packets transmitted, zero received. Hundred percent loss is there. This particular EC2 cannot access internet, right? Because IGW is not there, public IP is not there. How it will connect, right? Now here you can securely basically host your database server or app server, whatever required. But suppose you need to connect with internet for downloading certain files or accessing one external server for a particular reason from this place, then what we can do, we can basically use NAT, right? So this architecture we already implemented. Now we are just going to add one NAT here in the public subnet, okay, NAT gateway. What it will do, we will basically say 
in this particular uh, private subnet routing table we will assign that if it is connect trying to connect with internet then pass it to NAT gateway okay which is having a public IP so what will happen first traffic will go to this place and then it will go to NAT gateway and NAT gateway is created in public subnet right and public subnet has the routing mechanism with internet gateway to connect with internet right so what will happen that NAT gateway will go to this public routing table and it will see that okay I need to connect with internet that time I will use IGW so IGW it will use and it will connect to internet in the same way while doing reverse back what will happen from internet the packets will be coming to IGW and then via this particular routing table to NAT gateway which is our public and then from NAT gateway it will be transferred to our this private subnet DC. So from outside world it will appear that this particular NAT gateway which is having a public IP that is making request right but actually we can access directly internet in our private subnet itself okay. So let's do that particular activity. So for that what we have to do as a first step as you can see in the PPT we need to create a NAT gateway right. So I will go back to my VPC and then here I will go to NAT gateway and then here I will create a NAT gateway okay. So NAT gateway need a elastic IP which is not a kind of free service so very little amount might be charged for this particular experiment okay. My demo NAT gateway YT okay and then subnet so NAT gateway is where NAT gateway need a public IP address for connection right so it is launched in public subnet so we will be choosing our public subnet whatever we created public subnet A right and elastic IP allocation yes I want to allocate elastic IP and it is allocated right and then here what we can do we can create our NAT gateway it is going to take some time to create this particular NAT gateway the state is pending once the state will be okay to run then what we will do we will update this particular routing table which is attached to the private subnet okay so that from the private subnet to internet if any communication goes then it should go via this particular NAT gateway because NAT gateway has that elastic IP public IP address right that can be used to connect to internet right so that particular routing mechanism how the packets will be directed that we have to mention in routing table right otherwise it will not able to understand automatically now so here if you see it is still in pending state let's wait for a couple of seconds so see now it is available okay now what we will do we will update our private route table so let me just check whether connection interrupted or not no so now what we will do we will go to route tables and then here private route here we will be updating okay edit and then here if some request is coming from internet then pass it to NAT gateway okay this is the one what we created and we can save the changes that's it now this particular private subnet if you need to connect with internet you it can send request to NAT gateway which is having a public IP and that can connect to internet because that is created in public subnet right so let's try to use that same command ping google.com from here only okay and see here now from the private subnet itself we are able to ping earlier all packets got lost 100% loss was there but now we are able to connect to Google okay and this is how our NAT gateway is working okay it is basically translating the network address from this private uh, local IP to public IP and helping that to connect with the internet okay right I hope you got it and a very popular interview question is asked what is the difference between internet gateway and NAT gateway I hope you are getting it internet gateway basically allow the instance whatever is there in a VPC virtual private cloud which is having a public IP address that one it will allow to connect with internet okay suppose you are having a public IP address that is not sufficient to connect with internet right in that routing table we have to mention that if some requests are coming for internet then it should be forwarded to IGW and IGW will help to connect with internet right so to connect with internet couple of things are required one is public IP in your ECT instance one is internet gateway has to be created another one is routing table has to be configured properly and then you can connect to internet using that particular internet gateway right but NAT gateway is basically allow instances which even don't have any public IP all are private IP address, local machines, okay, in private subnet, those machines, NAT basically allow 
to connect with internet okay so internet gateway allow instances with public ip address to access internet but net gateway network address translation gateway allow instances which is not having any public ip to access internet okay i hope you are getting the difference and at the end to be on the safe side you must have to delete this net otherwise it might cost unnecessary charges okay so i hope you got the feeling that suppose you are having some ec2 instance in your private subnet and then you want to connect with internet that time you need a public ip and for that you can use net to connect with internet and net you can create in public subnet right so here it is deleting it will take some time let's wait for that so see now it is deleted and at the end what we have to do we have to release that elastic ip address whatever we used in nat gateway right so if you go to elastic ips here you will be able to see here public ip is there right so we have to just release this elastic ip address okay we have released that and at the end in the routing table of our private route okay we can delete this particular one okay see it is already showing black hole so i can edit that and basically remove this particular one again it became only private so if i basically save changes and now if i try to ping google.com again here all the packets will be lost again because we deleted our net okay five packets transmitted zero received 100 percent losses there right and at the end what we will do terminate both of our ec2 instance whatever launched in public as well as private uh, subnet okay in our next experiment we will again launch this one the base configuration is same whatever we have configured in our earlier discussion vpc subnets routing tables and all but we will just add some new new concepts in our upcoming sessions and eventually we will be in a good position where we can start using different aws services with networking in detail okay those i will be covering in our upcoming session so if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos. Thank you.